make up the difference between a major and a minor scale. So um, we'll start with a D minor scale. Um, the formula for that is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So I'll show you what that looks like on the piano roll. So we'll start with our root note, which is the D, and we'll go up one whole step. And our next, it asks for a half step. Go up a whole step, whole step, whole step, another whole step, and we end on the half step. And that is a D minor scale. We'll play that back. So you can hear it has a little bit more of an ominous or a sad sound to it. Um, a lot of people say that the minor key um, evokes sadder feeling, whereas the major key evokes happier feelings. Uh, some people like to write their dance music in the minor key because they feel that it's a little bit more exotic or uh, you know, just different sounding than the major. Uh, but there's plenty of music, pl dance music that's written in the uh, the major scale as well, the major key as well. So don't let the rules bog you down. So uh, I'll play a I'll put a um, a D minor chord over here as well. And then I'll play that with the, uh, the D minor scale that we wrote. We'll bring this down an octave again. So um, the, the three strongest um, notes in the scale are going to be the notes that make up the chord. Uh, so the notes that make up the chord, a D minor chord, is a D, an F, and an A. And the way I like to work when I'm starting off writing my melodies is I will, I will change the rhythm of the notes and I will work within those strong uh, notes and then kind of work around them. I'll show you what I mean real quick. So. Like I said, it's a D, an F, and what was the last one? An A. So um, I'll keep that D in there too. So I'm going to change this back to 16th notes, the grid. And um, you know, I'll just kind of throw in some notes here. And uh, we'll change the rhythm up a little bit. So um, here's kind of a simple melody that is just using the, uh, the, four, or the three strongest notes in that scale. That's kind of a good starting point, and then if you wanted to, you know, maybe shift something up, uh, you know, change this one to a C sharp, and to me that doesn't sound very good. And that, and the thing is, that falls within the the scale. Um, so sometimes, you know, the, the the notes that fall within a scale can sound bad in a particular melody with whatever sequence you're doing, and then one that doesn't fall in the scale can sound good. So um, it's really, you know, up to your best judgment when you're writing the music, and uh, don't don't get too consumed by the rules. But it does help to practice these scales a lot, and uh, practice these chords. That way, you can get a general understanding, and it just helps to train your ears as well to help notice, uh, you know, what different notes sound like in music, and uh, just practice the scales, practice the chords, and then maybe try writing up some melodies um, after you know if you get bored doing the scales and the chords. Um, that that helps to kind of apply what you've learned and uh, to be more creative I guess so uh, that's that's usually how I did it when I first started off and uh, I hope you guys have fun with this until next time